class where she serves as special assistant to the president for housing and urban policy. And she'll talk about other efforts at the state and local, ever, uh, state and local level to uh, protect people from eviction. So I'll turn it over to you, Erica. Thank you, Jacob. And what a tremendous panel. I drew so much uh, inspiration and gratitude for the work that the governors and uh, mayors and county leaders are doing at the local level to make uh, the kinds of flexibilities that Treasury has provided um, work to the benefit of renters and landlords. And we need to close that information gap and help them understand the resources that uh, are available. But jurisdictions also have other tools. Um, at their disposal, which can bind with uh, effective rental assistance delivery, can also help to ensure that vulnerable households and renters receive the protections um, and that landlords get paid in full. Um, these include instituting their own eviction moratoria or other protections that buy tenants more time to receive rental assistance. We heard a few of those earlier uh, on this panel, but I'm going to turn now uh, to Governor Jay Inslee of Washington. Washington State. Washington State has long been an innovator in housing policy um, and is now among the leaders in eviction protection, one of three states that has right, right to counsel. So, Governor, I'll turn it to you to give us more details. Thank you so much uh, for being here. Thank you. And thanks for everybody involved in this. We're fortunate to have a great president, vice president leading the charge on this. And I'm inspired by the creative juices of our colleagues as mayors and governors. Uh, particular shout out Judge Hidalgo, who is a, a hero of all of us in the United States for uh, her courage and creativity. And uh, I know we learn from each other. Look, I, I just share some things that have been considerably successful for us. We've done many of the things that uh, my colleagues have talked about already and equity. We're very proud of our equity issues to have 60% of our grants to communities of color. We've been very, very demographically astute on that. We're getting money out the door. The thing that I would just like to share with you that might be a little unique in our state is our eviction diversion program and our bridge program, uh, because it's working. Uh, between uh, completion of a more long-term program to prevent uh, evictions, we needed a bridge. And so I acted through my executive capacity uh, uh, the, providing a bridge between our legislative uh, uh, program, which is quite comprehensive, and its actual implementation sometime in October. This bridge has three components. One, to actually dollars to get dollars out. We've got about $240 million out the door, and we're improving that every day. That's the obvious thing. The second thing that is working, though, is a real eviction diversion program that this uh, bridge program is working. And we basically require our counties to stand up uh, a, 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 a a program where you have people who are eviction specialists to work with landlords and tenants to come up with a, an acceptable interim uh, program. And this has been very, very successful, getting people to have some assistance to reach res resolution. And that uh, has worked because we've got people in the counties. Now all but three of our counties are participants in this program. And it has worked because we can get people talking to each other uh, that can actually work and it is preventing evictions. And I'm very, very uh, happy about it. We stood it up in sort of record time to actually things get stood up in counties by supporting our counties to get this job done. Now we insisted on this happening. If there was gonna be any effort uh, towards removal, you have to participate in this program. This is why we're able to get almost all of our counties to participate, even those that are uh, politically controlled by a uh, a party that has not been as attuned to the resolution of this as my party has been. So it's been very successful across the state of Washington by insisting that people sit down and talk with another, one another to come up with interim plans from both sides of the table. Now, the, the third part of this is having legal counsel for tenants. This is extremely important. Look, only about 30% of people who actually even have a chance to show up when there's the formal unlawful detainer action. And so bringing this to the fore, requiring it is extremely important. Uh, look, a, a courtroom's a scary place, even for those who practice trial law, as I did for two or three decades. So having legal counsel uh, available is extremely important. That will be available com and complete uh, coming October, and the vast majority now have it. 
So that three-step process for a, an eviction diversion is working. I would commend it. It took relatively little, little infrastructure. It did take a little uh, insistence from the governor to make sure that all of our local uh, counties get on board. But we found mechanisms to actually make that happen. And so I'm happy about that. Now, we know why this is important. This is only the second virus. The first virus we've had a long time, which is gross economic inequality in our society. And that's why I'm very happy about what the president is leading in the infrastructure bill and the reconciliation bill. We look forward to success on that, but we can do our part locally and we are. I hope you can share some of the success we've had and then come uh, visit Washington State when you finally get a day off when, we're, when we've got COVID under control. Thank you. We will do that, Governor. Thank you. Um, and while there have been states like Washington um, that have their own eviction moratoria, local governments have also taken action to prevent evictions. And with the end of the federal CDC moratorium, some states and cities have heeded the administration's call and are taking active steps on preventing eviction, for instance, by enacting local eviction moratoria. And Boston and the state of Massachusetts Massachusetts have long had strong tenant protections and policies focused on the preservation of affordable rental housing. And Mayor Janey has joined us today to discuss why and how she enacted an eviction moratorium as part of her broader housing stability agenda in Boston. Thank you so much, Mayor. Thank you.